Hey everybody, it's Ben from Mental Effects, and just a couple quick minutes here today, I want to talk to you some just real talk. Just you and I, we're going to talk about wireless. Uh, whether it's wireless microphones or wireless speakers, IEM, that sort of thing, uh, we all know that this is getting more difficult, not less. Uh, now, I said a few years ago that the uh, recent decision from the FCC, and we all knew what would happen with the 600 megahertz repack would be a good thing. Uh, in the end, uh, that it would lead to probably the next great golden age of wireless. Uh, and I think that has happened. I think that's come to fruition. The reason, of course, is twofold. One, that, you know, uh, necessity is the mother of invention. And two, that finally these engineers knew exactly where we could go and what we could do. Uh, so they knew where to put their resources. But that being said, and I think the wireless systems that we see on the market today are uh, notably better than the ones we had 10 years ago. We are seeing these quantum leap forwards uh, in, in technology. Uh, but of course, what we see in some, uh, in some markets in particular, uh, some of your bigger metro markets, uh, you know, Indianapolis, Dallas, Fort Worth, Atlanta, uh, you know, New York, of course, these are very, very crowded markets. Uh, as the TV stations that used to exist up in the 600s begin to pack down, it's going to get very crowded. And so even though we have these better wireless systems and these, these better resources available to us, these better tools, we have to take it upon ourselves. We have to take ownership here. We have to be better wireless users. We need to understand what's going on under the hood of our wireless is a little bit better. Uh, we have to be a little more purposeful. Uh, we can't uh, simply take a wireless out to a gig and turn it on and expect good results. I think those days are, uh, are probably uh, headed out the door. Now, if you're in a smaller market, uh, possibly, you know, that could still happen. Even if you're in one of these bigger markets and you might say, well, I, I just turned mine on and it worked fine. Listen, that's like saying you played in traffic and didn't get hit by a car, okay? We have to be realistic here. Uh, you know, just because we got away with something doesn't mean we're going to continue to get away with it. So, here's a couple quick takeaways. One, make sure you have the right frequency band for your area. Now, this is meant to just be an informative video, not a sales pitch, but I'm going to tell you, we researched that not just looking at today's data, but also looking at the best available data we have for what's going to happen. We know where these TV stations are going to go, and we know approximately when. So we're going to try to make good recommendations on here's a band that you should get that's going to give you the best future uh, use of your wireless. Number two, of course, is understand what you have. And if you have a system that's inexpensive and has a very small tunable range, meaning you can't move over but maybe three or four TV channels, life could get very, very hard. Uh, so having more tunable range is, uh, is a desirable thing. And certainly some of the other features like pilot tone, which is typically an inaudible tone uh, to us, but our system can use that to decide how strong the signal is coming in, uh, how much of its transmitter it's receiving as opposed to outside interference. And that works uh, in collaboration with something that's called squelch. Uh, and so, you know, uh, I hate to say it, I know nobody wants to hear this, but first of all, read the manual. <laughs> Guys, gals, please, read the manuals. Two, again, work with a company that's going to support you. Uh, we're not the only one, there's other great companies out there, but again, we're spending time here to support our customers so that you can have reliable wireless. It still can. I'm not afraid of wireless today. I'm still coordinating tours uh, with wireless. I'm still taking care of, uh, for example, uh, signed on again for some more NCAA football, large stadiums, high channel counts. Uh, you know, we can still make it work, but there is some science behind this and there is some know-how. So, uh, number three, use good antennas and good antenna placement. Understand the types of antennas that are available to you. Understand things like quarter waves need to be attached to the ground plane of the receiver. Half, sway, half waves don't, uh, you know, uh, like a, a half wave dipole, log periodics don't. If you're using IEMs, maybe use a helical, something like that. Uh, anyway, not gonna make this a super long video, but just to tell you that this is just science, all right? It's, it's simple, right? It's just physics, but these are real things. Um, and we have to set ourselves up for uh, good results. We have to put ourselves in a position to succeed. So just some real talk. I'm seeing more and more chatter on the forums, uh, you know, people having uh, challenges with wireless and, uh, you know, they don't know why. And I get it. It's invisible. You can't see radio waves, uh, you know. So to kind of give you a sense of what's going on out there and how to better prepare yourselves. So as always, feel free to contact us with questions. We are here to help. Love to do that for you. And uh, also, you know, do us a favor and uh, click the subscribe button. We'd like to uh, have you watch a few more videos. So thanks for watching this one. Take care, everybody.